See, this is how you fix this. This duct tape is hilarious and just screams, I am a woman. Mm, 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 mm. Listen. You need to join me. All right, boys and girls. We're about to get into this video tricking on my dime and how I am a unprofessional car rental agency. That's how it goes. That's the Rover that started all of this. First, let's start off with tricking on my dime. As this whole thing starts to come together, I've pieced this story. This dude who has player energy rented this car for a single mother. I found French fries. I found um, candy and diapers, clean diapers, mind you, they were not used and some other stuff. And the job that was done on the license plate was clearly done by a woman. So it was all good that first week. He paid on time. Then he got late and it was excuse after excuse, story after story. And let me show y'all something. I wanna show y'all Hold on a second. The text that he sent me. Let me read it out if it's not on the screen. It's a little, hello sir, I don't play games for the police. Your car will sit. I don't do threes, threats either. I told you I would get the car to you. So at that point, he was saying, I'm not bringing your car back to you unless you be nice to me. And the story gets better. Once I called the police and she called him and she told him, you could be arrested, you could go to jail for what you're doing. And then he came up with some excuses and she put him on the phone and uh, he's like, hey, I'm bringing your car right now. And he's like, I just want to say, you are unprofessional, me, for calling the police to someone who owed me $1,400 to someone who assiduously refused to bring my property back. Let's, let's marinate on that. I am unprofessional because I called the police to compel him to do something that he should have just did. Because you see, I'm, I hate the N word, but I think it applies here because this was some N stuff. It's like, you ain't gonna make me bring you your car so what I owe you $1,400? So what I lost the key? So what I'm calling you at 2.45 in the morning because I lost the key and I feel that you should bring me a key. All that, see, I am unprofessional because I wanted you to pay for your rental. If you're not gonna pay for your rental, bring it back. I am unprofessional. Then he went on, you shouldn't even be in this business. He said that on the phone. You know, you need to have some compassion for your customers. Now, here's the thing. I'm going through some stuff. To this day, I have no clue to what he's going through. I had no clue to what the deal is. I don't know. And on the phone, he said, I got $1,400. You want me to leave the cash in the Range Rover? Sure, you have $1,400. That's why. I had to call the police on you to bring the rental back, and that's why you wasn't paying, because you got all, you, you flush with all this cash. You just flush. And as I look at this, more than likely, I got one more title today <laughs> to one of the to the 2013 Range Rover, not this one. I'm probably gonna get the title to this one in July, maybe August. But I'm just seeing that I'm having a certain issue. Now, this is what I gotta do tomorrow. Let's talk about the Porsche. 
The guy who rented the Porsche told me he let this chick drive it and she got carjacked. So I don't even know if the police are looking for this Porsche. Porsche, I don't know. So tomorrow, I gotta call in a police report on this dude to get a police report because and I, I sent him a text. I was like, look dude, I understand things happen, but unless you can help me get a police report, I sent this to him a few days ago. I'm gonna file a police report on you so I can generate a police report to turn into the insurance company. And he's like, man, you know, he, he was really lackadaisical, but tomorrow I'm gonna be calling the police and I'm gonna file a police report and I'm going to get a police report generated so I can turn in and also give the police information so they can be looking out because whoever stole the car, they riding around free and free and reckless. They don't have to worry about nothing because there is nobody looking for that car because of the way. And like, I'm pissed off that he let someone else drive the car. And I have not unleashed my fury, but this is one of the reasons that I'm gonna file a police report on him. Now, since it supposedly got hijacked and he's not driving it, he should not have to be worried about pull, pulled over and arrested if this is what happened. So tomorrow this happens because I need a police report to file for my insurance. And even after that, uh, it's my understanding that they're not gonna pay any money until the car's been missing at least 30 days. At least 30 days. So I don't know. And this was the most expensive car that I bought. And part of this is, um, it made me put in my messaging, don't let anyone else drive this car. Because if he hadn't let anyone else drive this car, we wouldn't be here. Because uh, we got dude renting stuff for single mamas, and he got that player energy, player, you know, dude owes me money, called me like, hey, what's up, man, how's it going? Talking to me like, we folk, we folk, you owe me 1,400 bucks and you ain't paying. And you trying to be charming and seductive. And this also brought up to mind, I have a lot of people who go to hire a car, they see the car, they request it. Then there's this category. I have been called unprofessional one, two, three, four times. And I had this girl who wanted me to let her boyfriend pick it up. That was a no. Then she wanted me to bring the car to her for free, costing me money. I, I don't know what she looks like, but I have a feel, feeling that she's cute and she's used to men just doing stuff for her because she cute except I don't care how cute she is. You messing with my money, you ugly as sin. So that was a no. And then I got this request from this guy who's like, what's your number? I wanna talk to you, but I put in the request. My experience, and I've only been doing this six weeks. My experience is when they wanna talk to you, it's some BS. Typically, it's gonna be some BS because it's quite simple. You want a car? I've put it all up in the listing that you can pick up the car at this address. Uh, I, I put in a lot of stuff that's come in and I will probably update the listings. Uh, one of the things is with hire car, when the car is rented, you cannot update the description or the pricing. You can only update the documents. So typically I got called prof unprofessional because this guy wanted to rent a car, car. And see, this is where it works. When you go to hit accept, it will say booking approved, which means their credit card went through, or trouble with payment plan, payment methods, which means their money wasn't right. So I had one dude, I tried, like, I tried to accept you three times, and then he was like, on me, on me, on me, and he's like, hey, I fixed it, and then I was like, three times. I tried to accept it once, didn't go through, twice, didn't go through, three times, it didn't go through. And at that point, I'm like, my sense of urgency is out the window. So then he said, I got it fixed. Are you gonna approve the car? Then boom, boom, boom. And then last message, you are unprofessional. I'm unprofessional because you don't have your money correct. But I am unprofessional, even though you're not properly situated to rent this car. And they're like, oh, I rented something else. 
Then I got un called unprofessional by this other clown. Now, this is what this clown wanted to do. He wanted the drop top Mercedes. And he's like, man, I, hey brother, man, I, I just want to talk to you. I don't even know how he know I'm black because on Mac Daddy Autos, it has a picture of a car, not me. And he, he's just like, hey man, you know, uh, what can you do? And I'm like, what do you mean, what can I do? In the messaging. He's like, I really want that drop top. Could you do 75? I got it for 150. But he wants me to reduce the price by 50%. This is not a good omen. And I'm like, nah, man, I ain't gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. And he said, man, you know, you're unprofessional because I would not acquiesce to his request. And every time that I get un called unprofessional, it's because someone isn't properly qualified. Forget the fact that your credit card ain't no good. Forget the fact that you wanna do some stuff that you know are against the rules. Anyone goes to Hertz, Avis, rent a car, and they're gonna like, are there any additional drivers? And you're gonna go, no. And they're gonna tell you, you're the only one that should be driving this car. But for some reason, with hire car, people feel that allowances should be made. For some reason. And like today was a particularly, um, like I'm getting ready to go to stage two. Uh, I'm pretty much done with buying cars and I'm not gonna buy any cars the rest of the month, and I'm not gonna buy any cars in July and perhaps August, probably not August, and start buying cars again in September. And one of the things I'm learning, because I'm gonna do a whole nother video about this, the things I learned about buying 21 cars in five weeks, that's a whole nother video by itself. I'm not even gonna go into that because that's, that's, that's a whole nother topic because I see in the comments that many of you wanna get in the car rental business and you're stressing to find that one car, that two cars, or those perfect deals. And I'm here to tell you that, and you're, you're not gonna wanna hear this, you're just better off getting started and dealing with the chips falling where the chips fall. Because I have uh, my business credit card, which I have racked up $8,000 on repairs, oil changes, key fobs, just in five weeks. And what I'm gonna do is allow the proceeds from the car rental business from in the June, July, and August to pay that, that credit card bill off, pay that off, and then to also pay for the sales tax, um, dealer fees, and tag fees. And at that point, I should, in the middle of July, I should have all of the titles to the first round of cars. And I am almost 95% sure that this is gonna go bye-bye. What I'm gonna do is rent it out so it can collect some money so I can get back the sales tax, the dealer's fees and all that other stuff. And then I'm probably gonna trade it in on two cars once I get the title. Because I have two Range Rovers, two more Range Rovers, and a BMW. I have five SUVs, and the money that I put in those five SUVs can turn into 10 cars. And like I said, I'm about 99% sure, and one of the reasons that there's a 5% perhaps is what's gonna happen in these next six weeks. Because if the cars stay rented out, it's gonna make it a harder decision to take them in and trade them. Like right now, this Range Rover, and I have a Range Rover Supercharge, which have not been rented, but the Mini, like all of the BMWs, I got two BMWs in the shop. I got one at the dealer for a recall issue, and I have one that's having service. I should have that back tomorrow. And they went out quicker than any car that I had. The BMWs went out quicker. I mean, like, I bought some cars third Friday, this weekend, they went. So BMW is a good, good car to put on there. 
in three series and five series if i shop around i can find them at the appropriate price right now who's to say what's going to happen in um august or september when i start buying cards again because this is my this is phase two collecting data and if you know if i have to you know like i said trade out of these that will not be me spending additional money that will be you, me using money that's already in the business to acquire more assets and i gotta say um i have a sneaking suspicion that the guy who rented the range rover for a month is he gonna do it again i just have a feeling i, I don't know why so it's going to probably take me to August to fully implement this switch out program. Um, I had someone rent the mini and this is what's funny. This is what's cracking me up. You know, who's renting most of my cars, DoorDash drivers and Uber eats. Cause I always ask him, I was like, Hey, you do Uber? No, nah, man, I do DoorDash. It's easier. I do DoorDash. I had a guy tell me Saturday, that he does DoorDash and he made $5,000 the previous month. And the way he said it was just like, matter of fact, like, yeah, I made five, just boom, boom. So I believe him. And a lot of people don't want to do Uber and Lyft. They want to do DoorDash, Uber Eats, Postmates, Amazon Flex. Um, and there's, there's another one out there. So I've got not one, not two, but three DoorDash drivers in BMWs at 55 bucks a day. At 55 bucks a day. And from me, from a standpoint, that's my most profitable segment at $55 per day price point because this is $70 a day. But if I could trade it on two BMWs and get 55 I'm going to make more money out of the same money. So that's why, like I said, you know, since I'm unprofessional, I'm unprofessional because I want you to fulfill your end of the contract. I want you to pay me. I want you to be a good renter. And fortunately for me, 99% of my renters are good, decent people. I don't have these problems. I got one guy, he works the night shift, he'll be late, but he, he catches up without me having to message him. And he's had the car almost four weeks. And one of the things that I, I'm probably getting away from this is, I mean, this is a nice little ride. It's not as fast as the supercharged one, the supercharged one, it kind of reminds me of my BMW, but one of the things I'm learning is messaging is very important. Another thing I'm learning is expectations and I'm learning to ask a lot of questions. And this isn't why I'm not talking to, uh, everyone's like wants me to talk to such and such, such and such. I'm not mentioning names cause I don't know these dudes, but none of them have 10 years of retail experience of selling multiple products across multiple channels to multiple people. I do, and I guarantee you, and this may be me being an elitist MF, that once I get my mojo together, I'm gonna make way more money than these dudes. I'm gonna tell you why. Because they're not business people. They saw an opportunity. Because essentially, once I can get my commercial insurance, that's a game changer. But once again, I need to get the sales tax the repair, I already got the repair fees back last month. So I'm be good there. And actually I got to look at that credit card because I don't think that I use that money to pay off that credit card. I have to look at my accounting, but the, the next two and a half months are data collection, asking a bunch of questions and fleet management because I have 21 cars. I should have 22 cars. Also, I'm doing a different, I, I came up with a strategy with Toro. I was like, I killed the price on the drop top. I made it $95 and I got a rental this Thursday. And what I did is I went in the calendar and I updated the price. Like 
the, the $95 is just this month. Then next month it goes up a little bit more. The next month it goes up a little bit more. And next month it goes up a little bit more. Depending on how it does, I may trade out of it. Because if it does as well as I think, because since it's a convertible hard top, it should do well in the summer as well as the winter because it's a hard top and it has a nice little sunroof in it. But I don't know. And I'm going to do a whole video talking about, you know, when people making these videos telling you this car does well on Turo, take that with a grain of salt because uh, until you actually buy a car and place it on the platform, you're not going to know. And that's what I've been finding out because I really thought the Mini, the red Mini Cooper would be, I thought it'd be out the door. The BMWs went out the door faster than that red Mini which since I'm getting all of these DoorDash drivers, it's a perfect DoorDash vehicle. It's a four cylinder, it's got a little pep, it's got a little style, it's got tinted windows. The guy who rented that, he's just renting the car. He doesn't do DoorDash, Uber, anything. He's just renting the car. And he said he chose the car because of the price, because I got it at $39. So I'm getting, you know, next two months, I'm gonna become rich in data. And that's what I need because once again, all of these fake ass YouTubers telling you you can make all this money. I've been doing this six weeks and the business is generating revenue, but it's not generating profit. Because I have spent, because essentially, I'm gonna do a whole video about this, but I spent $240,000 on cars and then I spent $25,000 for the Wells Fargo secured credit card to be the business credit card so I can do my oil changes, do whatever I need to do, do my repairs and have it on a credit card so I don't have to yank that money out of cash flow because I do have a Divi credit card with a very high limit. But what I don't like about the Divi, it's like American Express. You can use it, but you gotta pay it back in 30 days. And what I wanna do is, let, let's say I have a very large expense with the Wells Fargo credit card. I have the option to pay it off at the end of the month if the cash flow is there. If the cash flow isn't there, I have the convenience of paying it off over three or four months with no penalty, no problems. So that's why I got the credit cards because honestly, from a business, like there are many business charge cards out there, Divi, uh, Ramp, uh, Bricks, uh, there's another one. And they're charge cards. They're like American Express. I really don't like those. Even though I use my personal credit cards. And once again, I've put none of these expenses on none of my personal credit cards. Only thing I'm putting on there is all these car expenses on the business credit card to make accounting easier for the future. So that's all I've done. And one of the things that I'm learning from this is I have my LLC, Mac Daddy Autos. I have my business credit card. I have my office. So we're starting to look professional and my office is just really, really small. I have a feeling that I'm going to upgrade offices in a few months. I just have a feeling that's going to happen because essentially I got to teach my assistant how to check in cars. And the, the way we're going to do that is I'm going to get another phone in the business name. I'm going to probably go to AT&T, get an iPhone 6. I don't really need an iPhone 12 for this. And that's going to be her phone. And what we're going to do is set up a Google Voice number where she can check messages, I can check messages, and all this other stuff because i got to build systems and processes. And this is another thing that's going to happen in the next two months. We're going to be building systems and processes. And let's just talk about this. I'm five weeks in. So this month will be the end of my second month, which is 60 days. Then July is a testing recon period, which would be 90 days. And then August is another testing and recon period, which will be 120 days. I am sick and tired of people here on YouTube telling folks you can make all this big money in 30 days. They're doing it for the views. 
because I am a seasoned entrepreneur. I've had multiple businesses. I have good credit. I had capital and it's still going to take me about six months to dial this puppy in. Yet you got rank amateurs with no business experience, no sales experience, no marketing experience, no experience whatsoever, yet they're gonna make all this big money in 30 days. Come on, man. I understand that you know, you're know you a YouTuber, you wanna get views, but I feel there's a lot of garbage on YouTube in what I like to call useless information. Because this is one of the reasons I share with you the real. Like, there are many folks who will not tell you about all the problems I'm having. They'd be like, that's gonna make me look bad. I'm not gonna mention that. I have no problem, because I know all of these mistakes are lessons to be learned. And these are some of the best lessons, because I have a feeling, you know, I got some GPS trackers and kill switches in there right now. And I'm gonna have to get my GPS guy but I have a feeling going forward with the new communication, the new messaging, I'm not going to have these problems that I had with these two yardbirds. I don't have a feeling. I have a feeling I'm just not going to have these problems because I'm communicating with the guys. I'm putting the expectations. I'm laying them down. And eventually the GPS trackers will get installed. But what did I say? 99% of my renters are good people. 99% of them are not going to do this. It's, you know, I think there's too much emphasis on bad outcomes. Now, I was talking to a guy and he says he knows someone that does rentals and he got like three trackers in his car. He got one near the battery, one and like, these are expensive cars, so I kind of feel that. But also another reason that I feel that this is gonna go, I have a feeling it's gonna be real hard to wire that kill switch in this bad boy. I, I just got a feeling. I haven't even approached anyone but I got a feeling that it's gonna be hard. Like the Corolla, the Acris, that's, that's gonna be easy. I have a feeling. You wanna know why? Because they have normal keys. When you start getting into these keys, the $700 keys, man, it gets brutal. It gets brutal quick. So that's all, that's your message today from your unprofessional car rental agency, Mac Daddy Autos. We are professional because we don't bend over and take the LD. And if you get that reference, you're a good person. You're a good person. Because we ain't taking the LD. We want to be held. We want to be cuddled. We ain't taking no LDs. But yeah, I'm unprofessional because I want you to act right. It's funny. It's funny. So probably um, I got a new thing that's going to come out and I'm going to call it corporate papers. Uh, now that we have done with the intake and I've met my goals with because I really wanted to get 20, 22 cars and then rock with that and see how that works and then make changes during these next two months because I can turn these five SUVs into 10 cars, which would give me 31 cars. And I'm, I'm, I'm coming up with a better strategy because like the BMWs and I like the BMWs because I know the BMWs. You know what I like about the BMWs? I can check if it needs an oil change in these brakes because they will tell you that. Some of these other cars, the, the menus are complicated. So expect to see more BMWs. And like I said, I'm not 95% sure that these bad boys are gone, but if they start renting, they start going out, you know, it's kind of like, eh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. So we gotta wait until we get some more information. We gotta wait till we get some more rentals. This month is trending toward 10,000, maybe 12, maybe 12, because essentially half the month has gone by and I just got all these cars. And it takes a little time for the cars to get in the system takes a little time for them to go out two days to two weeks so but this month I will recoup a lot of that sales tax because I'm gonna make a video and I'm gonna you know because it's gonna take me a while to make this video because talking about buying cars I'm probably gonna break it up into two 
or three videos because it's a lot of information. Because you got a lot of people on here who are like, I'm financing cars for Turo, and I feel that if you do that wrong, it's gonna bite you in the butt. Because essentially, since I'm paying cash and I get that title, I can flip out of these cars pretty easy. It's just a matter of me getting that title. But if you're financing cars, you, that's a lot of, that's more hassle to flip out of those cars. You can flip out of them, you can sell them, you can trade out of them, but if you have negative equity, they're gonna roll that negative equity into the new loan. And I feel, talking to one dude, that's what's happened. So, yeah, this is your unprofessional car rental agency, Mac Daddy Autos. Be looking for some more information about corporate papers and stuff, because I got my ideal is just full of my head is full of ideals that I want to put out and I'm going to do some new training and I'm not going to do how to get into car rental training until way down the line because I'm just learning. I'm just in this. I'm, I'm, I'm six weeks in. So I'm not going to try to do paid training for getting in the car rental business until I get my stuff dress right dress until I'm like, boom, this is happening. This is happening. Because I feel that if I do it correctly, I can be at 30, 35,000 by September per month. And that's what I'm shooting for. And that's why I need more cars, because more cars is more opportunities to make money. I want each car is an employee. And each employee is making dollars. So the more employees I have, the more money that I make. That's how I look at it. Let me know your thoughts, opinions, and stuff in the comments. And I will see you guys in the next one.